Hey guys, it's Luke breaking down the slate for the NBA tonight for April 12th, 2021. And uh, I'm excited for tonight's slate. Obviously, we're post, you know, trade deadline, whatnot, and players are getting used to their teams. We're seeing how they're being incorporated. And now it's money time. Now that we've seen their roles, we've seen how they're going to be used, we can take advantage of it. You know, there's some mispriced players still out there, some guys that are priced a little bit too high that we can avoid. And uh, this video is going to help you make sure that you can win some money tonight. Um, and the first thing we're going to do tonight is go through some of the best games to target. So some of the high scoring games, some of the high possession games and whatnot, um, where you can, you know, utilize some stacks tonight. Maybe there'll be some high value, you know, star players, some smash plays you can put in there. Um, we'll talk about all that. But uh, the first game that we are going to be targeting tonight is going to be the Nets at the Timberwolves. That is going to have a 235 game total with Brooklyn being favored by six and a half points, which is a pretty you know sizable favorite there. Um, first of all, um, both teams are routinely teams that you know we target in videos like this. Brooklyn has a notoriously bad defense. Now they've gotten a little bit better after some of their recent acquisitions, but they're still bottom five in the league in terms of scoring average and defensive efficiency. So that's obviously a, a position that we want to go after there, um, a team that's weak on defense but the Timberwolves are also in that category they're bottom five in terms of efficiency um, and scoring average which is great to see and it's pretty obvious why they, they're just weak across the board defensively um, their backcourt is very offensive minded they're big Carl Anthony Towns same kind of thing you know he's not a terrible defender but he has, he's also not on the court for the whole time because he's coming back from injury so uh, I love the spot there. Um, there's a lot of value players in that game. There's one specifically that we'll cover later that I absolutely love. But I love, you know, good hefty game stacks there where you can put three and four from the one team or even two and three from the other. Um, probably most likely the three, two stacks. But um, I love stacking that game. I think there's a lot of opportunity for it to um, go well above the 235 total given just how bad the teams are. Um, and I do think that the total is as low as it is, um, even though the teams are so bad defensively because of the blowout risk. Um, the Timberwolves are pretty terrible. Um, the Nets have been trending recently, um, but the Nets are also going to be without Irving and Harden tonight. So that's very, very important to note. Um, and I think the total should be a little bit closer. The second game we're going to be targeting tonight is going to be the Sacramento Kings at the New Orleans Pelicans. That game has the highest total of the night per Vegas at 236 with New Orleans being favored by two and a half. So it's a very close game. It's the highest total on the night. Pretty much a slam dunk by we're going to love this one tonight. Um, the starters are going to get plenty of run if it's a close game like Vegas thinks. Um, the Kings are one of the worst teams in the league in terms of defensive um, pace. Um, they just love to run down the court and chuck shots, um, which is great for rebounds. It's great for high scoring games as well. And the Pelicans are terrible efficiency uh, in terms of efficiency on defense. Uh, they just can't stop a leak if they wanted to. Um, sometimes they play with a little bit of a slower pace to counteract that, but the Kings are going to push that pace tonight. So it's going to be a high pace, low efficiency for both sides. Um, Sacramento is the highest paced team in the NBA, but they're also top five, um, five in terms of worst defensive efficiencies. So I, I love everything I'm seeing with that matchup. Um, both one and two tonight are spots that we can heftily stack. So same thing here. Um, and there's also an overtime possibility, I'd say, with this game. Because we do expect it to be a close game, who knows? If this goes to overtime, it's going to be an awesome spot to stack. And that's when you want to have that 4-3 stack I was talking about. But... Other than that, nothing else to say here. Um, great spot. My third game to stack tonight is going to be the Bulls at the Memphis Grizzlies. That game has a 228.5 total, so a little bit lower than the others. Uh, but it is a close game. So the spread's only 2.5 um, to the Grizzlies, um, and that's why I really love attacking this. It's going to be a close game. Again, it could go to overtime just like the Kings and Pelicans. But what I really love about this game specifically is the explosive scoring on each side. So you have Zach Levine on the Bulls. You also have Nikola Vukovic, um, a lot of other role players that are great on that team as well. And on the flip side of Memphis, you have Jonas Valanciunas and also John Morant that are absolute studs scoring the ball. So I, I love that, you know, potential there of a shootout where, you know, Levine, Moran are going at it. You know, maybe even Valanchunas and Vucevic are going at it. Um, Daniel Tice, um, who we'll get to here in a second. I, I love him tonight. But I, I just, I love the situation. I, I love that Vegas thinks that it'll be a relatively high scoring game. Um, it's the third highest total on the slate. 
And again, I, I think the star power on each side is what I really like about it. It could smash through that total. It's supposed to be a close game. So you know those starters and those studs are going to get plenty of opportunity to score. Um, and that's why I love it. And uh, I think it's worth a moderate stack. So a 2-3 to a 1-2. So, you know, three guys from one team, two from the other, or, you know, two and one, vice versa. So I, uh, I like the spot tonight. And uh, the last game I want to highlight before we get into some of my top value plays here is going to be the Nuggets at the Warriors. Now, um, this game has a relatively lower total. It's at 226. You know, it's still in the upper echelon for tonight, but it is at number five, um, tied for fifth tonight. Um, and Denver is a sizable favorite at four and a half points. Now, there's not blowout risk there. Obviously, four and a half points is still relatively close. Um, but what I really like here is that the Warriors are sizably better at home. And obviously, they'll be home tonight. Steph Curry is going to be cooking. Um, Ubre has huge games at home, even though he's only been there for a season. Um, same thing with Wiggins, obviously. He's been there for like a year and a half. Um, so I like a moderate stack in this game just because the studs could um, have a great game if it is close. Uh, I'm talking, you know, Curry, Jokic. You can, you know, you can run a stack like that. Um, with a couple of value guys in there. So um, again, it's something I wanted to throw out there because I do think it's going to be a closer game than what Vegas thinks. Um, and if it is, the total is going to go way, way higher than what Vegas thinks. Um, obviously, Golden State, when they win this year, they're they're averaging 128 points. So it's, it's outrageous. Um, and if they do that, the, the total is going closer to like 240, 250. So um, I don't think that's super likely. I don't think it happens every time by any means, but I, I think the potential's there. And it's definitely worth a moderate stack um, in a couple of your lineups tonight. Now, getting into some of my top value plays, number one is going to be Daniel Theis. Now, I, I mentioned him before. Um, he's a center for the Chicago Bulls now. He's, he's not on the Celtics. Just make sure uh, you remember that. But he's coming in at only $3,300, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, he's completely mispriced after being traded. Um, and the last time we saw him out, just yesterday, he went for 29 minutes. You know, he didn't have an amazing game efficiency-wise, you know, less than a point per minute, but still smashed at his price. Um, and he wasn't priced up by any means. Um, he's going to see a similar role tonight, you know, probably 25 to 32 minutes, probably closer to like that 27, 28 minute mark. Um, and he's typically around a, you know, 0.75, 0.8 um, point per minute producer, which at that price gives him an extremely high floor. He's going to easily pay off that $3,300 price tag, probably even at a 6x level. And we've seen Thais this year go for 40 plus points plenty of times. He does it about 20, 25% of the time. And if he does that, you know, goes out, has, you know, that double double with a couple peripherals, a couple blocks and whatnot, he's going to smash the slate. He's going to be someone you absolutely have to have. Um, so I love the spot. And again, it's one of those games that I mentioned before as a target. So, you know, he's in one of those paced up spots where it could be a shootout. And if it is, Thais could very well um, be a smash play tonight. My second target for tonight is going to be Mohamed Bamba of the Orlando Magic. Again, he's another center, so you can't really pair. Um, I'm one and two targets uh, together, but that's all right. Um, he's coming in at $4,300, so you're going to be spending a little bit more money. Um, but what I really like about Bamba is that you're getting a really high floor these days. His usage has crept up from about 10% about three weeks ago to about 29-30% now um, over the last few days, um, which is outrageous. Um, he scored a career-high 21 points his last time out. He's obviously getting used to the offense. He's getting a lot more comfortable scoring the ball. Um, you know, before um, when he wasn't really as involved in the offense, he was just kind of standing there taking rebounds. Obviously, if he got a rebound, he'd go and try to dunk. Um, if he could do it without much resistance, but now he's he's really calling his own number. Um, he took some shots last time out, um, not you know long or anything. They were they were pretty close, but um, you know he was calling his own number a little bit, which I, I like to see. He's getting a lot more comfortable. Um, again, he's going to get you those rebounds. He's going to get you those blocks. Um, probably even a couple steals as well. Um, he's a very defensive minded player, and uh, I, I I like that. He's got a well rounded approach. Again, high floor I believe with a really really high ceiling. Um, if again, if he goes out, scores another 20 points, um, and actually puts up the peripherals that he's used to this time, he's going to score like 40, 50 fantasy points. Um, again, I, I see him closer and I haven't projected closer to around 28 fantasy points, which again is still great value. Um, but I, I, I love the floor and I love the potential ceiling as well. And my last player target for tonight is going to be Bruce Brown Jr. And that's of the Brooklyn Nets. Um, he's a point guard and shooting guard coming in at $4,800. Now, he's a little bit more expensive than I normally like to go to on a value, guys. 
Um, but given his price, it's just such great value tonight. So he's got a great um, game environment. Um, as I said before, Irving and Harden are out. Um, so which means he's going to have to shoulder the assist low. He's going to have to shoot more shots. He's going to have to take more rebounds, great, get more steals, um, because there's just such a void left by those two players. Um, and on top of that, um, obviously he's got the great matchup against the Timberwolves, um, which makes it even better. Um, we've seen in the past Bruce Brown have some great games, some triple doubles even, where he's got a bunch of assists. Um, he's a point guard. That makes sense. You know, scores over 10 points, whatever. Uh, but he's, he's also been a big rebound guy um, in, in the past specifically, not so much this year. Um, I think mostly because he's been playing alongside James Harden or Kyrie Irving, um, who, who hog a lot of the statistics. Um, now with both of them out, he's going to have a chance to go out, put out that well-rounded game. And, and I think he could have a massive game tonight. Um, I think at the very least, he's going to go out, um, probably put out, you know, 30, 35 fantasy points, which is great for his price. That's why I think um, he's such a good value play tonight. You know, he's got that really high floor. But I think his ceiling is somewhere in the 40, you know, maybe 45 fantasy point range, which as price would be approaching 9, even 10x value. And it would be somebody, you know, that breaks the slate. So um, I love that potential. I love that high um, floor. Um, the high floor is really what you're looking for in these value plays. Um, and, and ideally, you'd love them to have that potential to go off as well. Um, all three, you know, fit that criterion. That's why they're on my list for today. And uh, again, in the comments, I'd, I'd love to know who you guys think is a great value play tonight. Um, there's a lot more than three. Um, I had to kind of narrow it down. Um, but let me know who you guys like tonight and uh, why you like them. Um, that's all for the early preview. Obviously, um, there's going to be some news that breaks the slate as always. But uh, keep this in mind. Uh, I think this is good baseline information that uh, you can fall back on, even if some great plays open up um, later on in the day. So. Um, as always, like the video if you liked what you saw, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. See ya.